Two college students are injured, one critically injured after falling from a balcony at a UVA fraternity house. A lot of medical and forensics testimony today, so certainly a long day, about eight hours of testimony so far, and you have to think he did not expect 26 years in prison. That's a that's a pretty substantial sentence. And our big story tonight, the battle on the baseball field. The weather definitely a factor in the Cavaliers baseball game today as the game was delayed. For the first time, we're hearing a timeline for the Western Bypass and construction could start in less than a year. I wanted to show you some of the ice. I know that's what Brantley was talking about, the conditions. Look here on this car. So far, my favorite was a Lego man. Very creative, very cool. Mona Lisa and peanut butter and jelly. Some best friends who wanted to be a pair. So. I know, he's been out since 2008, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, we'll he has to be a little rusty. Yeah, we hope yeah. so now. We do now hope so. We're back. competitive girls. That's and true. We like the Giants. <laughs> Trash, bugs, and even dead animals. One spot near the intersection of Ray's Fours Road and Bleak House Road is emerging as an illegal dumping ground. We pulled out couches, uh, televisions. Um, I've gone down and picked up what you know what I can get out, but there's still a lot of big debris down there. The latest addition to the pile may be animal waste or spoiled animal feed. It's too much for the neighbors to take. While the trash spills down to the reservoir, the smell rises up to Ray's Ford Road and the houses just beyond the hill. I'm not that squeamish, but this was nasty stuff. So nasty, the neighbors are taking action, alerting the Ravana Water and Sewer Authority about the problem on the property. RWSA quickly responds to the complaint. We investigated it um, and we did find some uh, evidence of animal carcasses uh, and some other trash that have been placed there. An RWSA employee surveys the scene with a contractor. The mess removal <laughs> underway within a matter of hours. We hope to have this cleaned up by tomorrow. The cleanup is the first step, but the RWSA is looking into ways to prevent this from happening again in the future. Neighbors hope they can enjoy the water without the smell. Carter Johnson, CBS 19 News. For 46 years, Coach Fletcher Errett has been a staple at Fork Union Military Academy. Well, I played here myself in 59-60. And from 1966 on, he spent his life teaching the cadets both in the classroom and on the basketball court. He's a hard worker, so he wants you, he expects you to work hard too, and he just expects the best from you. He does a great job of um, helping building our character as well. He's building character and leading by example. His assistant coach and son-in-law, Brooks Berry, played under him. He works early in the morning till late in the night, uh, 365 days a year. So even though he, he's got cancer right now, a lot of people wouldn't even be able to tell. But he's fighting to beat blood cancer, stage three lymphoma. Cancer is just another game. I mean, it's just it's something you have to go through. I mean, everybody's going to have uh, uh, some problem at some time or the other, and you have to get through that. His focus remains on the game of basketball. In addition to giving their all here on the court in practice, some of the players are also sporting new buzz cuts to show their support for Coach Eric. Uh, everybody's starting this new haircut, so I might start it once everything goes on. I'll probably get a new haircut like Coach Eric. The players are giving their all because that's what the coach asked for, expects, and deserves. And Coach Eric is doing his part, fighting the cancer, and also for a win the next time the team suits up. The next challenge will be us playing a little defense, which we did not play the other night at Fishburne. Carter Johnson, CBS 19 News. Lots of lights in the sky, but not just fireworks tonight. Strong storms, high winds, and lightning all across central Virginia. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Carter Johnson. We begin tonight with a line of strong storms moving through much of the area. Countless trees down, blocking roadways all across Albemarle County and into the city of Charlottesville as well. Now, a few of the key road closures include Woodland Road and Old Ivy Road in Albemarle County. There are more than 14,000 people without power in the county and more than 4,000 without power in the city. And an apartment in, in Pantops was hit by lightning. Crews on the scene there. For the very latest on the storms, we'll go ahead and turn things over to meteorologist Melanie Neiman. Thanks, Melanie. To our top news stories now, a crash involving a motorcycle and a pickup truck.
claims the life of a 26 year old Crozet man. The accident happened Saturday afternoon around 1 p.m. at the intersection of Gordonsville Road and Clockner Road. Albemarle County police say the driver of the motorcycle, 26 year old Ethan Keeney, was taken to the UVA Medical Center where he later died from his injuries. Albemarle County crash reconstruction team is investigating. Now this does mark the 10th fatality in Albemarle County this year. An accident this afternoon near the University of Virginia sends one person to the hospital. That accident at the intersection of Emmett Street and McCormick Road. The driver, one driver, attempting to pull off of McCormick and onto Emmett and then pulled into the path of a Toyota Camry. The driver of the Camry was taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. Charges are pending. Water shooting 50 to 100 feet into the air today in downtown Charlottesville. Now, it happened around 4 p.m. at the corner of Elliott and 2nd Street Southeast. That's where the site of an ongoing sewer and water project. Workers say that a cork stop was knocked off of a water pipe, causing this water to shoot up from the ground. Public utility crews did work to fix the leak, and they did not need to stop water flow in the area. Well, Monticello will host its annual naturalization ceremony tomorrow. Nearly 80 people on tap to become American citizens. CBS 19's Chris Dover speaks to one naturalized citizen as she plans to go back and share in the experience she experienced herself just two years ago. More details now. 77 people will become American citizens at the naturalization ceremony. It starts at 9 a.m. tomorrow and is open to everyone. The keynote speaker is Mutar Kent. He is the CEO of the Coca-Cola Company and a dual citizen of both the United States and Turkey. 100 showed up this afternoon to Free Union's annual 4th of July parade. The parade featuring many different costumes and different themes. Everything from bikes and wagons and even, get this, synchronized tractor driving. That's my favorite. After the parade, many sticking around to enjoy some of the traditional and not so traditional food. And uh, that's pretty much it. Along with the food, costumes also available, ranging everything from clowns to past presidents, live music performances, were also a part of the celebration. Well, that parade followed by a few more tomorrow as the 4th of July celebrations continue. On Monday, Scottsville, Standardsville, Lovingston, and Earliesville will all celebrate the 4th of July with the parade. And of course, the fireworks as well. The rain did put a damper on one of the shows tonight, the show in Orange County, but the fireworks, that show was canceled in Wintergreen. That show was able to take place as originally scheduled. Now on Monday, there are more shows scheduled for Charlottesville, Scottsville, and Lake Monticello. And of course, also on Monday, Patriotism in the Park, which is sponsored by the Newsplex and CenturyLink. The 4th of July festivities begin at McIntyre Park at 6 p.m. with fireworks sponsored by Stellar One Bank starting just one minute after dark. Now, please leave your pets and alcohol at home. You can park for free at Charlottesville High School. And if you can't make it out to the park, don't worry. We will be broadcasting the event live starting at 9 p.m. right here on CBS 19 and also on our web channel, newsplex.com. Well, coming up when we continue, we'll let you know how buying a simple glass of lemonade, and you can do that at Patriotism in the Park, can help in the fight against childhood cancer. We'll let you know how you can support Alex's lemonade stand.